Hey everyone, welcome back to our DC review. This is my review for episode 6 of The Penguin, and that was a brilliant episode. I thought last week's was good, but not as good as the other episodes, but this week they brought it back. I was really impressed by today's addition to the story, and that cliffhanger was mental. Now I think that has to be Colin Farrell's best performance yet. That speech he had with the various gangs, his interactions with his mother, and when he was comforting Victor were all incredible moments of acting from Farrell, and I really think he will be up for awards for that performance, and he should win. This show would have been great without him, purely just down to how good the writing is, but his acting takes this to another level, and I don't think anyone could play the Penguin as well as he is right now. This episode had so many different storylines all overlapping, and it gave us this fluid pacing that meant that no one was overlooked, but also no one was given too much screen time. I mentioned that last week I thought we spent too much time with Victor and Oz's mother when we should have had more time with Oz and Sophia. But this episode had the perfect amount of everyone, and our time with Victor and Francis were really important to this episode and next week's episode, especially the ending. And I think Victor's story this week has become even more heartbreaking. He upset Oz at the beginning with trying to comfort his mother, and then he didn't want to bother Oz with Squid, so he tried to deal with it himself and was kind of forced to kill him. And then that realization of what he had done just overwhelmed him and he regretted it instantly. It was a really heartbreaking scene. And then not only that, but then seeing Oz understand that pain he is in and comforting him and actually hugging him was a real emotional and surprising moment. It's that kind of stuff that foolishly warms me to Oz, but then he goes and does something diabolical again and then you remember how much of a bad person he is. And I'm worried about what that next diabolical thing will be. And I'm worried worried it kind of has something to do with Victor. But then we saw Sophia going to kill Eve, but when she realised she had been manipulated by Oz, just like Sophia had, you could see that Sophia actually sympathised with her and then decided not to kill her. And I'm glad we saw that because I think it would have been a real cliche moment if she had just killed her to get her revenge on Oz. And instead, Eve told Sophia where Oz really was, and that's a perfect combination of writing. They developed two characters in one scene, while subverting our expectations, and then that moved the story forward in a very intense way. Brilliant writing, and I want the team that has written this show to be in the DCU's team for writing their shows and movies. That group of writers have done an incredible job, and I am loving what they are doing. But now let's talk about that ending, because I am really worried about Victor and Francis. Sophia finds where they are, and is holding a crowbar, which is an interesting weapon of choice. Because why would wouldn't she be holding the gun she was using earlier, unless she wants to cause more pain before putting them out of their misery and truly emotionally torturing Oz. But I would also argue that I think Victor could probably take Sophia on if all she had was a crowbar. I don't think she would be very dangerous to Victor who is quite tall and definitely stronger than her, so I don't think it should be as easy as her walking in and getting what she wants. I'm hoping she at least has a gun in her other hand that we didn't see, and maybe that is what she uses to get them to do what she wants, because otherwise I just don't see how she could overpower Victor with just a crowbar unless she has the element of surprise and maybe knocks him out and then takes Francis with her. That's really the only way I see Sophia succeeding in that scenario. But I really want to see what happens next and I'm still loving this show. Easily the best comic book show I have seen in terms of quality of production and story. The only thing I have loved as much as this, if not more, was The Flash Season 1 and 2, but the production quality was nowhere near the Penguins, and neither was the acting to be honest. I just loved the story of season 1 and 2, and obviously the characters, but the writing wasn't as deep or as powerful as the Penguin is. I basically love both of them very much, but for different reasons. It's like loving the Batman, but also Superman the movie. Very different tones, and in all honesty quality, but I love them both very much. But back to the Penguin. This was another great episode, and I cannot wait for next week. Week. But before we end today's review, I have a question about last week's episode. We saw Oz pay off a guard to try and kill Moroni, but if it was that easy for someone to get a guard to stab Moroni, why hadn't the Falcons done it before, or anyone for that matter? Oz almost succeeded if it wasn't for the guard.
guard keeping the keys with him, and Moroni somehow escaping the entire prison. So why hadn't someone tried to do it before and succeeded? It's something that has bothered me since last week, and I can't think of a reasonable explanation for it. So if you guys do know how that was possible, please let me know in the comments below, because I won't lie, I think that was a bit of lazy writing. Now, as we are getting towards the end of the series, the intensity is rising, and the story is increasing in stature within Gotham, and now I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm questioning where Batman is. I know I said at the beginning of the series that I don't want him to appear, as it could just take away from what this show is about, and it could feel like a forced cameo, but now it's getting to the point where he's almost needed. A lot of Gotham is in danger, or at least involved in this story, and no one has really mentioned the Batman, and I would have thought like in today's episode, this would have been the perfect time for him to be mentioned. Like one of the thugs just saying not only do they have to look out for Moroni's and Gigante's men, but also the Batman. That kind of thing would just make this feel a bit more authentic to how these thugs would be thinking, because we saw in the Batman that when they saw that symbol in the sky, it was a warning to those criminals that he is out there. But we haven't seen the bat signal at all, nor any mention from the thugs that they have to look out for him. Maybe the writers felt that if they mentioned him like that, then people would expect him to appear, which would take away from their story. And I do get that. But I also think even without a mention of Batman in these later episodes, this story would feel slightly disconnected to the Batman. If the scale of the events going on gets any larger, then I feel Batman would need to appear in some form. And that's not me desperate for a cameo, because I hate cameos for the sake of cameos. I'm just saying that this story is getting bigger and bigger, and to ensure that this still feels like it's connected to the Batman, I feel he needs to appear in some way or be mentioned far more than he has already, to just feel like this show is in the same universe as the Batman movie. Unless he has stopped being Batman for a while, to re-evaluate his motives with being a vigilante. The Batman did end with him realising he can be a symbol for hope, rather than someone everyone is afraid of, so maybe he's taking a bit of time out. But I feel we need to get a reference to that, just so it makes sense why he isn't in this show at all. But back to this week's episode, I still loved it, and I would give it an 8.3 out of 10. So let me know your score in the comments below. But that is all for today's review, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!